Hey everybody, how you doing? This is Danny Alvarez here. Um, for those that don't know me, not too familiar, familiar with me, I'm a third degree black belt. Uh, I've been training about 20 years and had my academy now, Elbrose Jiu Jitsu, for about 10 years. Um, this video is primarily for my for my own students, but I figured it benefit like a lot of people out there that are just starting out in Jiu Jitsu and um, and even some that have been in the game for a while and uh, kind of like off and on with their training and um, kind of struggling with like finding that balance between like life and uh, Jiu Jitsu along with whatever else. You know, life life is obviously um, uh, a lot busier these days for everyone. Um, you know, people have families, you know, kids, dogs, like bills, you know, work, you know, um, a lot of hours, some more than others. Um, some have more kids than others. Some, some are going to school on top of all that. So um, over the 10 plus years I've been teaching in my academy, plus the 20 years that I've known people throughout all those years of training that have come and gone, um, I would like, for me, I'm going to share with you what I did to get to where I'm at, and then maybe it'll help you as well. Uh, because I have I have other students that have been with me um, seven, eight years, something like that, um, even 10. Uh, one individual has been with me about 10 years of consistent training, like never took an, or never has never taken a break or anything like that. And out of the, all the years that I've been training, um, I've never taken a break except for uh, I had a knee surgery uh, at one point, like a meniscus uh, repair. I was out for like three months. I had uh, a shoulder separation. Um, I was out um, probably about the same amount of time, two, three months, something like that. You know, and then like just your, you know, other, you know, pulls and strains and stuff like that, you know, that you would probably get through any physical activity like jujitsu you know um besides that um i have never like i've never taken a break from the mat or even had the urge to take a break from the mat now that's just me now everyone is different everyone has a different why of why they start and i think if you just kind of focus and re keep rem uh, a reminder somewhere of why you started then you will be able to just continue to stay on the path and not life get too too much in the way um, because life changes uh, every couple of years or so your life will change it'll shift um, at least that's what I've seen as a pattern with all of my students and then including myself and um, I feel like with all the distractions that life throws your way if you can can commit to a certain certain days throughout the week um, for your training you will be able to outlast everyone around you um, along with you know continue to go like me like uh, you know there's very few people that I know that um, that have trained um, as long as I have but consistently and you know you just got some of those you know people like myself that are just very committed and dedicated to a certain thing and it's just something that's like a must have and so again everyone is different on why they start um, when I started um, I really started in Michigan and in Saginaw Michigan but there really was no jiu-jitsu uh, like Academy it was like a Taekwondo Academy that taught jiu-jitsu a couple times a week and that was kind of like uh, you know it would be there then it wouldn't be there it, it wasn't the primary thing of the uh, the academy it was uh, secondary and um, so you know I, I dabbled around in that and you know we'd, we'd grapple and we're talking back in the in the mid to late 90s you know VHS tapes grappling in the living rooms um, you know carpet burns out in the backyard you know grass stains like in the dirt like just wherever you can get some rolls in you would I would just do it along with some of the guys that I used to train with and the keyword is used to because those guys no longer train um, anymore. And then I moved to Texas in 2002. And then I found like, like jujitsu, like, like Machado Jiu Jitsu, like an academy and affiliate. And um, that was what was here in the Metroplex in the Dallas Fort Worth area. And when I found that, I was like, wow, this is like 
the real stuff, like it's an actual thing, like an actual academy committed to nothing but jujitsu. And, um, you know, I wanted to, uh, I just wanted a piece of that, like every single day if I could, but I couldn't, I had a family. So what I did was at the time I was working at General Motors because I transferred. So I was working anywhere from like 40 to 50 hours a week, depending on what the, what the schedule was. Again, you got a wife, I got a wife, I got a, a daughter at that time, Danielle was seven or eight years old, um, you know, dogs and bills like everyone else. And so I committed myself to Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Saturday. Because I had a family, um, you know, like a lot of people do, I couldn't commit to every single day. Like I would like to. Like, I wanted to be on the mat every day, but I had to be fair and have a balance. And so, you know, on those off days of not training, I would still get a workout in because I've always been that kind of person. I either run or I work out, uh, you know, strength and conditioning and then on opposite days. And then, you know, you spend time with your family and you skip jujitsu. But I would still get my workouts in, so I was still doing something. And I let my family know exactly what I was doing, like what my schedule was. And I asked them to please don't bother me on those particular days unless it was like an absolute emergency because those are my dedicated dedicated days to train. Now, again, I had a family and right now, you know, I see like internet forums or, you know, Facebook posts, comments or whatever. You know, my family becomes before anything and yeah every that, that's a no-brainer like everyone's family should come before anything that's priority and you got your job and then you got like you know your extracurricular activities and whatever else but I signed up for it I was paying for it um, so I was gonna go to it and so because I committed myself to those four days you know on on those days in the very beginning I would come across some friction there. Like, oh, how come you can't just stay home? Let's watch a movie. Um, let's go to the movies. Uh, why do you gotta go today? Um, you know, I'm not trying to throw you know, my wife under the bus or anything, but I'm just, so that you can relate to me and relate to the situation at hand, because probably you're going through the same thing. It could be it could be your boyfriend, your husband, or significant other, whatever the case may be. Someone is or something is going to try and pull you away from you going to class. And again, if you signed up for it, the way I looked at it is, is I already had a family and a job and all these other things before I signed up. I knew that. So I signed up anyways because I looked at the schedule and I'm like, okay, I can go on these days. So yeah, I like the program. It's legit. And so I'm going to go ahead and sign up. So to use like oh i love my family and my family comes first and blah blah well if that's the case and you need to spend time with your family this might rub some people the wrong way but it, to me it's just what it is um then you shouldn't sign up for jiu-jitsu like you go somewhere whether it's my academy or somewhere else and you look at the schedule and you're like oh yeah i think i can i can make those days a couple times a week two three times a week and then you sign up like you should go and what will happen is is all these other things will come in the way Maybe you got to work over, um, you know, maybe you, maybe you, um, you know, go back to school, you pick up some classes or, or whatever the case may be. You still got to find a way to adjust your schedule accor accordingly so that you can get at least two, two, three days in a week. I think that's very um, sufficient, you know, for some people like myself, I had to, ha I had to have four and if I could get five in, then I would sneak the fifth day in if possible, but I had to have four and nothing was going to stop me from getting four. My mom, even at the time, you know, at that time she cooked a lot of Mexican food and now she, now she doesn't because I won't eat it. And, um, but I would tell her, hey, look, you know, you, if you want me to come over and have dinner, you know, please don't invite me over on these particular days, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Saturday, because I'm going to class. And I was, you know, the family would talk about me behind my back. I'm this and I'm that and I'm, a, you know, just some foul stuff or whatever. And I could deal with that because for me, I had a goal and I wanted to accomplish it. Now, I'm not even talking about competition or even owning a school. At that time, I just wanted to train jiu-jitsu because I liked what it did for me. 
mentally, physically. I like the people that I was around. Um, I like, uh, you know, my, my professor and my coach, you know, and I just love the atmosphere. I love what jujitsu gave me. And you would, sometimes I would get like, oh, you know, again, I'm not trying to just, you got to be able to relate to the situation. Oh, you don't um, love me like, like you do jujitsu or, or I don't know, just crazy, crazy stuff people can say. And at the end of the day, a person can love you a certain way, but that's not the same as you doing something for yourself personally that gives you a satisfaction, a self-satisfaction that nothing else can give you because you're doing something yourself and you're accomplishing things and you're achieving a goal. And even though spending time with someone like a loved one and going to the movies and having dinner and, and just spending quality time with someone is great as a different kind of love. Being in love with a person is not the same with being in love with jujitsu. Being in love with jujitsu is being in love like with yourself, like taking care of yourself. Because of it, I was, um, I'm a physically active person and I liked what jujitsu gave me. I liked what it gave me physically and mentally. It relieved a lot of stress. It put me around good people. I wasn't doing other things that I was wasting time with. Uh, you know, I look forward to getting out of work so that I could go and train, you know, so on and so forth. All the benefits of jujitsu, there's a ton of them. And that's what kept me going was that. That was a huge motivator. And yeah, I love my family. I love my daughter. Like, like this is, but I also love myself. And they're not gonna take care of me like I'm gonna take care of myself. And that's the, like the biggest thing. You know, I, for my students, I always use this analogy, like, cause I fly a lot, you know, I compete a lot, I travel, coach, and uh, I'm always on a plane. And it's always the same spill. If there's turbulence, oxygen mask is gonna come down from the compartment above your head, put your mask on first, and then put the mask on the person next to you, okay? They never say, put your kid's mask on first, or put the old lady's mask on first next to you, or the elderly person next to you, or whoever next to you, and then put yours on last. It's always put your mask on first, and then help the person next to you. Why is that? so that you can breathe and because you're able to breathe you can go help someone else breathe and you can help someone else like like help help them and that's the way i look at jujitsu i look at jujitsu as like it gives me oxygen like nothing else gives me oxygen like it gives me it gives me a uh uh this thing to where because i'm helping myself i'm helping out my health my mental like physical like everything like I eat really clean and, and good, and that's a whole nother video that I was gonna put out, that I'm gonna put out soon, that helps with jujitsu. But because I'm helping myself first, and I'm being selfish, because you have to be selfish, because if you're not, and you might, you're gonna get like talked about because of that, because I get talked about because of that. But I have to be selfish. I have to take care of myself, like the oxygen mask coming off of the, uh, the plane, so that I can breathe. Because if I'm in a, in, in a good state, a good physical state, mental state, and I'm in a good mood and I have good vibes coming off me, then I can go and give those vibes to my family, to my friends, to my students, anybody that I meet, and so on and so forth. It's that ripple effect. But if I'm not training and I'm not doing anything physical, I'm not exercising, I'm not eating right, I'm not strength conditioning, I'm just laying on the couch and just being a bum, like, like that's what I would, for me, not if you're anyone else doing that like don't take offense to that but that's just me like i'm not helping myself any man like i'm getting out of shape i'm just i'm not i'm not doing the things that i should be doing to take care of myself so that i can go and help other people so it's very important that you take care of yourself so that you can help take care of other people and the way you do that it could be crossfit it could be a boot camp it could be painting your passion it could be uh you know, whatever, skydiving, like whatever it is, do something for yourself that that's going to help you mentally and, and, you know, hopefully physically too. And that way you can help other people around you and be the best that you can be. And like I said, going back to what I read on some of these comments on some of the, the Facebook posts about some of these topics out there like that, is people use family as a cop out, like a, like an excuse. That's like the biggest excuse ever. Like, is to me, is like lame, and I'll probably catch some flack for that too, because 
you already knew you had a family before that, before you signed up. Now, maybe you started a family somewhere in between that. Most most academies have like a six year agreement or a one year agreement, like we like I have. Some do a little bit longer, but if you're doing it six months to a year and you're renewing and you have kids, and then it's time to renew again, then you need to weigh your options and look at the schedule that you have. Like us, we have a six a.m. at ten thirty and a seven to eight thirty p.m. Monday through Friday. Well, Monday, Wednesday, Friday is six a.m. and then the ten thirty till noon is Monday through Friday, and then we have evenings Monday through Friday. Then we have Saturday and Sunday. So for my students, it's really hard to have them, for me, to have an excuse to miss just one, to like not come at all, at, at, at all, because we have so many classes available. Now, not a, every academy has those availabilities, but if it's time for you to renew and you started a family or you went back to school and you took on some extra things, then you probably shouldn't sign up because you can't use that as an excuse later. If you sign up and you renew at your academy or you renew here, and you know that you have these things that you committed to, uh, like more kids uh, or your first kid or, like I said, going back to school to get a degree or, or, or master's or bachelor's or doctorate, whatever. And then you want to use, like, all those other things to be like, why you ain't go to, why you're not going to class? You can't. It's not, it's not, it doesn't hold any water because you signed up. No one knocked on your door, made you sign an agreement, and made you come train jiu-jitsu. You walked in someone's academy. You, you did a free trial or something like, like people do here. They like what they see or whatever. And then they sign up. You know, they look at the schedule and be like, yeah, I can make, you know, X amount of classes a week. And yeah, I, I like this and this is fun and I want to give it a shot. And, you know, if the six months is up and you can't do it anymore, then, you know, then your six months is up and you go, you go do what else, whatever else that you were doing or a year or so on and so forth. So for people out there to use family as an excuse, um, is, is pretty lame because they should are you like you already had that before you signed up or before you renew you make a decision on whether you can keep going or not and again I don't myself I don't expect any of my students to train every day even though I have some that do some multiple times in a day every day but I think the average here is about two times a week, and I would say probably across the board on the planet at any academy across and around the world, it's probably two to maybe three days a week. So you space that out, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Monday, Wednesday, Saturday, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, Monday, Thursday, Saturday. And in between those days, you spend time with your family, you take your classes, or you do whatever it is that you, know, that you do, but commit to some days let your family know what those days are. Don't miss them. If you do miss them, try to make them up. And the progression through the ranks will just keep going. It's when people have no schedule, no commitment to any days, it, it becomes like they'll start to miss days and they'll start to miss weeks and they'll start to miss. It's so hard to come back. Jiu-Jitsu is not horseshoes. It's not like... Oh yeah, hey, let's get together and go play a game of horseshoes. And you just like you're just throwing these horseshoes at this stake over there in the grass, and like, hey, you know, it's cool, and or darts or something like that. This is physical stuff. Like someone's on top of you, trying to dominate you, impose their will, and choke you, armbar you, footlock you, like whatever. And you have to stop them, and you're trying to do the same to them. So if you take time off and you're eating bad, and and you're just you know you're coming and going from practice, you'll never progress like you'd want to progress. And it never really gets fun because you're always like getting crushed. And the only way to get better is to commit, be dedicated to a certain amount of days, two days, three days. For some people, I have a guy, he moved from San Antonio, uh, he's Luis, he's a great guy. Man, he trains dang near every day. He don't have any family here. He has no kids, no wife. He lives in an apartment down the street. Like, so he can. You know, he had no other commitments. So kudos to that guy because he's making, you know, he's making use of his time. We're his family. We're his, this is how he spends his, his time when he gets out of work. And he does the CrossFit that we have in the, in the gym. So, you know, the guy's active and he uses this. But if you have two kids, three kids, four kids, and you're going back to school, you're working 40, 50 hours plus a week. You know, I have guys that would do all that and they still come to class two to three times a week. So for the ones out there that sign up, and you know you just don't make a commitment to any days and you don't have an actual schedule a routine 
of certain days that you need to go to class. Um, it's going to be very, very hard to progress through the ranks. And, um, you know, you start to look um, amongst your peers like you can't commit to anything. You're not dependable um, because jujitsu, you need people. You need students. You need your teammates. They're very important. So, um, you know, that's a little bit of kind of like my background and where I, where I got where I started and like how I am where I am today. And even like now, I train every day, twice a day, because I can, and I run and I work out on the off days. Like I literally train like every day. So, you know, but that's just me. You know, I, I just never had the urge to take the time off of the mat. And like I said, if you, if you walk into someone's academy, whether it's mine or somewhere else, and you sign up, you committed to something. And for me, a lot of the times I'll have parents, adults that'll sign up, but then they want to hold their kids accountable to their classes or to their other sport, baseball, basketball, football. But then the parents aren't leading by example and they're not committing to the thing that they signed up for. I mean, how do you do that? You know, like you can't. How do you expect people to follow you if you're not able to lead by example yourself? If you're, you can't do what you're asking someone else to do. It's kind of hard to do that. It's kind of hard to expect them to follow you when and, and do what you ask them to do and get up and go to practice because you, you said you were going to do it, but then you don't go to practice yourself. So think about all these things. Think about what days you can commit yourself to. Space them out. Put your family uh, as a priority, obviously. Schedule jiu-jitsu around your family. Make two to three days a week if possible. And then nothing comes in between those days. It's good for you physically. It's good for you mentally. There's a lot of good people on the mats. Great networking for, for jobs and everything else. Like whatever. Um, it's, just a, it's just a great thing. And like I said... You're doing something for yourself um, so that you can breathe, so that you, you're relieving stress and you're doing good things for your body and for your mind. And that way you can go and help other other people. You know, I, I mean, I can't tell you how many times like people try to pull me away from jujitsu and I'm like, man, I can't do it. Like I'll go, I'm going to class first and then after class, I feel really good, happy, like, like, like chill afterwards and then I'm ready to do whatever go to movies like like whatever like you know so you know but um you know make that commitment to yourself to your coach to your team and um I, you know doing that you for sure will make it to black belt and beyond all right be on the lookout for more videos in the future upon some other important things to kind of help you with your jiu-jitsu